Hi, this is David with Haggerty, and today on our DIY series, we're going to talk about torque, specifically torque wrenches. But the question might be, what's torque? Well, torque is what gets your beer calf off, as they say in some of the advertisements, or turns the tires on your car. But in this case, we're going to talk about fastener torque. So it's truly the amount of energy you need to put into this nut and bolt, twisting it tight, creating a clamp load on whatever you're trying to attach to something else. Torque is measured in units such as foot pounds of torque. So it is relative to a foot and how many pounds you put out on this end, pushing it down. That gives you the torque around the rotation point, or in our case, the fastener. Now there's a couple different styles of torque wrenches to use. You have the good old fashioned beam style, which what it did is it, as the head is held tight because you're starting to apply a lot of load here, this beam starts to deflect. And as it deflects, then you read the units on, on the gauge that is supplied. And then down here at the handle, you'll notice this handle pivots. The reason the handle pivots is it stops me as the user from holding it down here and only applying load here versus here because again, it's a measurement of foot pounds. So exactly 12 inches or in this case, you know, roughly 16, but that's just a unit of measure. But that point is right here all the time and when I pull on the handle and it's always to here. So this distance does not change. It has some graduations up here on the uh, handle area, this is the gauge portion of it, and as you apply torque to the bolt, this beam will deflect, you know, in this type of manner, and you read foot pounds. This works when you don't have anything else. However, the issue is, you know, if these aren't treated really nicely, this beam not only deflects well, when you're using it, but it also deflects when you're throwing it into storage and this easily becomes damaged. And then two, you have to be able to see this so you cannot have it in some obscure spot where you're holding on to it and waiting for it to bend over and, and click or give you some sort of tactile feedback. You have to have a visual on the gauge. Its accuracy also is not that grand. Um, if you're within five, then I guess you're fine. But if you get into some other little more detail where you really want you know, one to two foot pounds of accuracy, um, then it's not going to work very well for you. But it definitely has its purpose and uh, some function still. Now to move on here, we have a, an array of wrenches. Now just as our jobs require different amounts of torque, there's also torque wrenches that are designed specific to ranges, meaning you have an inch pound, you have a foot pound, and then you have a really large foot pound torque wrench. Now this style of wrench is considered a clicker wrench. It gives you some positive feedback that basically as you reach the torque that you've set it to, it, it kicks over. Now to explain how that works in a little more detail, I took a wrench apart to show you the functional apparatus. So you have, here's your handle, if you, if you will, this is your wrench, right? Now, what the guts of it, or working mechanism, is here's your handle. As you adjust this handle inward, what you're truly doing is compressing this spring, putting more load onto the bottom of this uh, little puck here, and it has, it goes right up against the end of the wrench. The wrench actually pivots out here at my fingers, and as you go through and add more torque to it, you finally get to the point where it breaks over. So as your torque increases and you exceed the load of the spring, that will give you this over center function. It will click uh, audibly, and then you also get feedback through the handle that you've reached your torque. To adjust these or set your torque value, you simply pull back whatever the release is and you rotate the handle clockwise, compressing that internal spring. And it has graduation marks on here. In this particular case, it has macro adjustments of 10 foot pound increments, and then it has call them micro adjustments of, of one to a half actually uh, foot pound of torque. And you rotate this until you get to, you zero at, uh, let's see, get here to 50. So I roll it at 50, the zero's lined up. Now I just go to get the 55, I go five past 55. Same general principle as a micrometer if you're familiar with using one of those. 
At that point, this tool is ready to use. You're ready to torque to 55 foot-pounds of torque. Now, you will not get any feedback prior to 55. You will only get feedback as far as that over center click right at 55 foot-pounds. That becomes important when you start to do um, torquing down that has, say, multiple fasteners. So, for instance, in our red line rebuilds, when we put on the heads, you'll notice that we go A in a sequence, and that's prescribed by the manufacturer as far as how that gasket should be compressed, because what you're doing is you're clamping the heads with a gasket in between to the deck surface of the block. And for a sealing function, you want to compress that gasket evenly. So they prescribe a sequence. Now not only a sequence in just in the order of which the fasteners are torqued down, but also you want to step that torque up. So in other words, on a head that might be torqued 85 foot-pounds, you do not want to take the very first bolt and wrap it right up to 85 foot-pounds. So go around the sequence one time, say at 25. Then you might increment that up to 50 and then go all the way around again. And then lastly hit your 85 mark. The point is, split your torque value in, in some amount, something lower than the maximum, about three times as the prescribed method that's, you know, say, usually used. So to illustrate a torque sequence, at the, this illustration is relative to a five lug wheel, but what you'll see is it does not tell you to clamp each lug tight on one side because that would potentially cause the wheel to cock on the surface and you would have it not clamped down evenly. So you can see that in this particular case, it uses a crisscross pattern because you're located off a of center. But if it's in a cylinder head, you'll see that it's actually like a circular pattern. Kind of the same function, the whole idea is that you're, you put your clamp load around the part and that evenly pulls it down. Now also what you'll find in the fastener world is if it is a head bolt, as a, for instance going into the block, they will give you a recommended lubrication. So sometimes it's a uh, sealer, depending if it's going into a water jacket. It may also just be engine oil, or the manufacturer of the fastener may say, hey, yeah, use this exact lubricant that we're supplying with it. The idea is you want clamp load. Torque can be skewed by rotational friction. So if your threads are hanging up on each other, that torque load will be skewed, meaning it'll take a lot of torque, but you're not getting the clamp load. So. That's, that's why that's important and you're gonna see, you'll see that in so putting lug nuts on your wheels, putting on head bolts, putting on your uh, intake manifold, so on and so forth. So there's always the debate of when you go to store your torque wrench that is this style of torque wrench, do you need to back off the handle and take the load off the spring? I'm gonna say yes, because as this spring is held in a compressed state, Technically, you're making it work. Common sense says if I alleviate that, the spring's sitting in a natural state and is not wearing it. Okay, now lastly, we have a digital torque wrench. On the digital torque wrench, it uses a circuitry and a strain gauge to do the exact same thing as far as determining what that torque is. Now, these are a lot more reliable. They're not mechanical. Um, they utilize a battery. You can get into some that actually record if you're doing some sort of production line. You can actually go through and record how accurate your operator was and so on and so forth. This actually does inch pounds, newton meters, um, and foot pounds. So it has a little more range as far as what the units are. And again, you can come in and you can set actually a min and max. So this has a lot more versatility. It also allows you to read um, on the fly. So it has, as you're, as you're putting torque into something, you can see where you're at. So I use this a lot like when I'm set bearing preload. So I want to see what that rotational torque is. I need something that's live um, feedback as far as what that torque is. So for instance, when we put the pinion nut on our gear swap, I could read that it was 15 to 20 inch pounds of torque. Um, now lastly is this little guy which doesn't look like a torque wrench at all. So in today's world of fastener, they also throw at us not only torque, but they also talk about angle. And what angle does is I talked about the drag on the threads and kind of getting that skewed number for torque. Angle takes some of that out. You still need to lubricate the threads as required, so on and so forth. But what this guy does, it just uses a standard 
ratchet. It doesn't care how long this is. It uses a strain gauge that's built inside of this to determine what torque value is. And then once it hits the torque, it will record that value of angle after that torque's reached. So let's say the fastener requirement is 55 foot-pounds of torque, but 92 degrees of angle. So what you'll do is you'll torque to 55, and then the gauge flips over and starts reading angle, and then you'll come to the 92 degrees of angle, and then it beeps and lets you know that you've got to where you wanted to be at. So this setup does not negate sequence. That sequence is still applies, but what it's doing is just adding that angle function of your torque spec. This is all fine and dandy, right? You got your torque wrench, you know how to do it. Now, if you want to understand the torque and why is there certain torque on certain bolts, now that's a very in-depth conversation relative to how the manufacturer did their design approach and, and why they want the torque where it's at. It's a lot of testing, it's a lot of calculation to get there. And that also fl flows into you know, grade five, grade eight, those types of things relative to your bolts. Now, at the end of the day, you have clamp load, this bolt can only maintain so much tensile strength, and if you start to exceed it, it actually starts to stretch. And that is where like the torque to angle comes in, is those bolts want to be stretched. Um, and they basically act as a, almost as a spring, if you will, that's holding the two plates together. The problem with that, or what happens there, if it is a torque to, to angle, that's considered a torque to yield bolt. That is a one-time use bolt. You want to use them one time and throw them in the trash no matter what they look like. On the other hand, when it's not, it's just a standard torque, you can use some common sense and lots of times you can reuse those bolts if they're not damaged. Functions of bolts, torque wrenches, the whole idea is you're clamping something together and trying to hold it from coming apart, or in a case like a wheel, you're actually trying to hold it from rotating. So fastener size, all that type of stuff makes a difference. Um, Use what they ask you to use and you'll be fine. Typically speaking, torque wrenches are used for a clockwise or right-handed um, application of torque and setting torque. They are also reversible and they go in the left-hand direction as well. So if you have a left-handed threaded bolt or fastener, you can use them to put torque there as well. That, does, that is fine. However, these are torque wrenches, not breaker bars. So do yourself a favor, buy a breaker bar to break away bolts or nuts that are tight. Do not use your really precision piece of equipment to use as a hammer to break away parts. But let's put this to work and show you some application on a wheel. So to put our torque knowledge to use, we're gonna use this wheel as an example on this uh, large foot-pound uh, torque wrench. And as you go through and you take and set your torque, twisting the handle, Set it to 85 foot-pounds. Bring it in here. And go in our crisscross pattern. All right, so you can certainly hear the click of the wrench and hear, and I can feel it in my hand. Now also note, this was in the exact same spot I needed to use an extension and use an extension that was heavy enough to transmit that torque into the wheel without any loss. All right, so one more last piece of advice. In practical applications, there are going to be times where you cannot get to what you, you know, that nut that's buried, but you still have to torque it. So it's fine to use like a deep well socket to get to what you need to get to and put the torque on it that's required. And there's even times where you're going to need to use an extension so you can get in a little bit deeper. For instance, on a wheel, when I go to torque this wheel down, the way the body sits and the way the dish is on the wheel, I need to get in there for it. However, I'm going to use a extension that's sufficient to hold the torque that I'm trying to apply to that wheel stud. If you don't, what's gonna happen is if this starts to twist, you'll either A, break your tool, but B, most I'll say the worst thing is it's going to twist and you're not going to be putting the torque and subsequent clamp load onto the fastener that you're trying to achieve. So even though we've all gotten into the situation where I need to do this 
to reach whatever it is and torque that huge nut to some torque. And it's okay to use your extensions this way. Just keep in mind that you're going to lose the torque value you think you're putting into it. So be smart and be safe. All right, hopefully you found this video informative and it got you motivated to get out in the shop, get some work done. Now, please click and subscribe, leave your comments below. We will do our best to answer all your questions. But most importantly, get out there and drive. Enjoy these things. Have a great day until next time. See you.